containerized shipping has been in the news a lot recently. As luck would have it, I had already started on a related project, making a one-tenth scale shipping container. I have no particular need for one, but they're fascinating objects. They kind of exist outside of time and space as we normally conceive of it, like very slow teleportation. A truck picks them up, they disappear into the shadowy realm of intermodal transportation, and a few weeks later they appear on the other side of the world. This is my ode to these anonymous objects that have reshaped our world. This is a basic 20-foot box, 20 feet long by 8 feet wide by 8 feet 6 inches tall. There is quite a range of different lengths, with 8, 10, 40, 48, 53, and even 60-foot models now available. Height and width aren't as variable, though, as those are more constrained by things like the size of railroad tunnels. You can look on Wikipedia to see all the weird variations if you're interested. The important thing to know is that cargo capacity is quoted in terms of a 20-foot box. TEU, 20-foot equivalent units. So when you see a ship that is said to carry 20,000 boxes, this almost certainly means 20,000 TEU. The number of actual physical boxes will be much lower than that, as most will be 40-foot units. The idea of making a scale TEU, a 20-foot equivalent equivalent unit, if you will, had been simmering in the back of my mind, the way ideas do, until I picked up a box pan break for the new shop. See, I knew I could machine everything except the corrugated sides. The pattern is very specific, with these flat crusts and troughs. I couldn't find any pre-made materials that looked right, so I knew I was going to have to bend it myself. First I set about making an adjustable stop. The exact angle of the bend wasn't super critical, but it did matter a lot that they were all the same angle. I needed precision, not accuracy, and luckily that tends to be a lot easier. I decided a simple slotted plate that could bolt on in place of the apron angle iron would do fine. And it did. With this in place, I tried making the first test piece. To do this I needed to describe dozens of lines 7 millimeters apart on both sides of the sheet, using a height gauge. Slow and tedious, but I figured it would be worth it if it worked. It did not work particularly well. Getting the fingers to clamp down exactly on the line was really fiddly, and the bins ended up being much mushier than I wanted. The problem was that the apron which bends the metal was a bit wider than 7 millimeters. So while each bend started reasonably crisp, this got messed up by the following bend. Since I wasn't going to replace the entire apron, I accepted this as a basic constraint. I tried bending a sheet using the width of the apron as the crest and trough width. This made the corrugation slightly out of scale, but not unacceptably so. The results were a lot better, and it went by much faster as I wasn't using the scribed lines at all, just lining up the previous bend by feel. I thought this would be improved even more with the addition of a guide to keep the sheet perpendicular to the brake. Since it was critical to keep everything perpendicular, I first drilled these bolt holes on the mill so the two pieces could be screwed together, then I welded in the side piece. The overhanging lip locks it into place on the apron. Using this I experimented some more, and some more, and some more. I was trying to adjust the fingers on the brake to give it a consistent bend across the full width, and I just wasn't able to. This is a used brake, and the fingers have seen some use. Because of the width of the sheet, it had to span three different fingers, and getting them all perfectly aligned with each other seemed impossible. I decided to order some steel to make a new finger wide enough to do the whole thing at once, and put this aside while I waited for that to arrive. That left the corners as the next obvious part to work on. This is a shipping container corner casting. You can just buy them, it turns out. It's a big dumb lump of steel, but it is the most important part of the entire system. This is what the containers sit on. This is what locks them down to railroad cars. This is what transfers the weight through them when stacked on top of each other. This is the main interface of a shipping container with the rest of the world. Being castings, they contain features that simply cannot be milled. I could get a bit closer with a shaper, but I'm not fortunate enough to have one of those yet. And even that couldn't get the undercuts on the inside. But my scale TEU won't actually need to interface with anything, so I just need to approximate the shape as closely as possible. I needed eight of them. Four left corners and four right corners. Eight times anything takes a long time to get done, but at least I could production line them, doing each operation on them in turn before moving on to the next. I even managed not to get confused by the mirror symmetry. I was careful not to do the machining too well. If you look at the real one, the tooling marks on the three machine sides are plainly visible. Like all truly well-engineered items, 
These are manufactured to exactly the right amount of precision needed without spending one cent more. And here they are, eight completed corners. I'd hoped to get further with this project before the first video, but oh well. The first full Philosophical Reactions video will be out next week, and then part two of this project should follow that. Cheers!